Konnichiwa everyone, this is Jeff's Japan Vlog number 3. As you can see I'm taking a very casual day. It's the end of the Veterans Day holiday weekend. So thank you to all those who have served and have enabled me to have the freedom to explore Japan and keep you guys vlog entries every week. I spent the weekend relaxing and exploring the area. So on Saturday I actually took my new bike out for 2-3 to three hours. Just rode around town to kind of explore the area. So I'm going to show you some pictures of what I saw around town. So first off, this is right down the street. It is the coolest school bus I think I've ever seen. And I totally wish I had one of those when I was going to school. You continue down the street, you go across a couple rivers. Here's a view from one of them. It's really beautiful here in the fall time, something that I did miss when I was in California. As nice as California was, you didn't get the seasons changing like you do here or back home in Pennsylvania. So with all the biking around I did get hungry so I decided to try most burger for the first time and if you know me you know that I do love my burgers. So the verdict was it's good. It, it is a fast food place but it's definitely way better than any McDonald's or Burger King or anything like that. You can tell just from looking at the food it, it looks high quality and it's pretty tasty and it's not that expensive. I think the burger was 400 yen and the fries were another 1 or 200 yen. So you can get a good fast food meal that's tasty and good for, I don't know, 5 or 6 dollars. And since we're on the topic of food, I'll just show you some a bento box that I got at the Family Mart, which is the biggest convenience store chain here, along with 7-Eleven. They have 7-Elevens and Family Marts everywhere. So this bento box, you can get these anywhere like they even have these at the train station and that's probably the the nicest thing about Japan is honestly that you can get good food for cheap anywhere you go if you're hungry at the train station you can go to the convenience store there and pick up a bento box like this which is four rolls of sushi and those things are sweet bread with rice in the middle and they're really really good and that costs 400 yen and they the bento boxes have a big variety so you can get Tons of different combinations, and all of them cost between 250 and 500 yen. So, really good deal, filling meals, and they're everywhere. It's great. So now that I've made you all sufficiently hungry, I'm going to show you some pictures from the castle tour that I did on Sunday. This is Matsumoto Castle. It was about a three-hour bus ride from the base to get up here. Definitely cool. I wish I could give you more information about it, but everything that was information-wise was written in Japanese, so I don't really have much to give you. I have the one English thing, and I'll read some things off of here on that. The castle was built in the late 1500s, early 1600s, and it was built as a defense fortress in case there was any attackers nearby. They said there was never any battles fought there, and then eventually, because they didn't really need the castle for defense anymore. They really just built a city around it. So the, it was kind of interesting because you park in a city and then the castle is kind of in its own little section and then there's a city built all around it. There is a moat around the castle. It's really, really shallow though. So I don't know whether the water used to be higher or not. Or maybe it was always just shallow and it people crossing the water would give the guards in the tower more time to shoot them. From the windows which I'll show you where they would look down. Here's a view from one of the observation windows on the upper floors so you can see they would be able to see out to the moat and the bridge and see anybody that was going to come attack. And here's another window where it looks like they'd be able to shoot out easily and have be very hard for anybody to shoot back in. I'm really just making this stuff up. I don't know what they were really used for because like I said everything is in Japanese but sounds good to me. And here are some of the guns that they used in the tower. Really big. I don't know how accurate they were, but I'm sure if they actually did hit you, they'd do some damage. Here was some samurai armor that was on display. There was something I actually could read that said that the hallways were built wide enough so that people in full samurai armor could run up and down the hallways without having to worry about getting stuck. This is a view from the castle on the second floor. You can see the mountains and the trees. It's just really beautiful in the fall. And walking around the town, you can see everything just looks very nice this time of year. And then there was this statue. 
definitely my favorite statue that I've seen in Japan thus far. Now, I've only been here a couple weeks. I think it's going to be pretty hard to top. So before I recount the rest of the day, it's time for the funny story of the week. So I was outside the castle with one of another Air Force guy, Michael, that I met on the bus. And we were just hanging out and seeing the sights. And these three Asian dudes walk up to us and they say shashin, which means picture in Japanese. So we assume that they want us to take their picture in front of the castle. So Michael gets, you know, gets their camera and he's, you know, getting in position to take their picture. And they're like, uh, no, what? no, no, they're acting all confused. And we're really confused because we don't know what's going on. So it turns out that they didn't want us to take their picture. They wanted to get individual picker, pictures with Michael. And we have no idea why. <laughs> it's a completely average American guy. Uh, it turns out these guys were from Indonesia and they really wanted to take a picture with Michael. And they didn't even care about the castle because originally they were just going to take it without the castle in the background. Like, well, do you want the castle in the background? Michael handled it pretty well, to tell you the truth. He let them take the picture. They gave, they were doing peace signs and everything. That's what they wanted to do. And uh, two different guys took their picture with Michael and they were thrilled. So don't really know what that was about, but <laughs> it was funny. So after the castle, we went to the Ukiyo-e Museum, which is a museum full of woodblock paintings and there actually was an English documentary on how they make these and I'm not gonna lie I might have fallen asleep during some of it it was a long day of walking in a dark room with a monotone narrator but it is really complex and it was interesting the parts I did see they will actually etch into the wood the outlines of the paintings and then there's a really complex process from transferring each individual color onto the canvas that they they put the paintings on and I'd tell you more but like I said I fell asleep so look it up if you're interested after the museum they bust us back to the base I ended up getting home around 6 p.m. on Sunday but because I had Monday off decided I'd do some more exploring so I actually went down to Tokyo and met a friend Ella down there and she took me around to see some sights down there. So here's some pictures from that. This is a view of the Rainbow Bridge at night. It's in Oidaiba. It's really cool to see in person. And the pictures didn't come out that great at night on my iPhone. So apologize for that. And this is Rainbow Bridge from another angle. You can see to the left of the main support of the bridge. There's a tall bright building in the far distance. That's actually Tokyo Tower, which was the tallest building in Tokyo until recently when they built Tokyo Skytree, and that was finished in 2012. And hey, look, the Statue of Liberty is in Tokyo. I was actually really surprised to see this. So I did some research and figured out why it was there. Apparently, there was something called the French Year in Japan which was from April of 98 to May of 99, in which they brought the French Statue of Liberty replica of the real Statue of Liberty to Japan. And everybody liked it so much that in 2000, they just built a replica and they just kept it there. So that's the, that's the Statue of Liberty that's in Japan. It's a pretty cool view with the statue and then the bridge in the background. And here's actually a daytime view of Tokyo Tower from much closer. They actually built this tower in 1958, and it was the main telecommunications tower for Tokyo for a long time. And then it's actually, even though it was the tallest building in Tokyo, it wasn't tall enough for them to do all the digital broadcasting that they're trying to do in the modern age, which is why they built the taller Tokyo Skytree, which is pretty close, but a, a little ways away in Tokyo. So those are my adventures for the weekend. I do have one more little story. I rode my bike to the train station for the first time and I got there and then I realized I have no idea where to put my bike. Normally if you go to a store or something you can just park your bike on the street and you can leave it there for a little while, they won't give you problems, but I can't read any of the signs there, I'm pretty sure you can't do that. I call one of my friends I'm like, hey if I leave my bike on the street here, is they gonna, they're going to just take it away? And he's like, yeah I don't know for sure, but probably, so I wouldn't do that. So I walked around the train station for a little while and then I found a lot where all these bicycles were parked and they did have a sign, I'll pay for parking, 100 yen, 24 hour parking. So 
That was good, and I'll show you what the lot looks like. Here's the lot, and you can see they have tons of bikes there, and you will just slide your bike into the slots that are numbered, and the machine, I guess, registers when you put your bike on there based on when you slide it into the slot there. So my big dilemma was, do I need to pay for the parking now or what? So I look at the machine. I can't read anything. Everything's in Japanese. I try to pay for my slot, and it doesn't even let me. So I look at the other bikes. I'm seeing if they have any sort of sticker on them, any ticket, and they don't. So I'd seen other people park cars before, and I was pretty sure that they just paid after. So I just crossed my fingers, left my bike in the slot, and I was like, all right, I'll just pay after hopefully my bike's still there and good news my bike was there when i got back in the morning this little machine is what you use to pay for it and i was able to figure out i just typed in the number for my bike stand and it said oh 200 yen your fee and once i paid it unlocked my bike so that i could get it out and crisis averted i got my bike back yay I think I have rambled sufficiently enough for one entry. I have one more picture to show you, and I will leave it at that. Here is an ad that you'll see if you go on the train to Japan. And I just want you to focus on the guy in the ad. And I'm pretty sure I'm just... I'm not cool because I do not wear clothes like him. And I feel like if I want to be cool in Japan, I need to get some hipster clothes and drink Kanoko Light. So next time you see me... You'll see me in cool clothes like that. Well, hope you enjoyed some more sights from Japan. Until next time, sayonara!